Greetings, everyone. I've just seen Masters of the Air's new hero, and my mind is buzzing with thoughts. Stick around as we dissect the hero story. The 100th Bomb Group launches its third mission in as many days, the Monster Raid, during Masters of the Air Episode 5. Only one plane, flown by Robert Rosie Rosenthal, who would go on to survive World War II while completing many more noteworthy missions, can return to Thorpe Habits. The third mission of what was known as Black Week was the Monster Raid. The 100th along with other U.S. Air Force soldiers suffered terrible losses on numerous perilous sorties during these few days. The fact that Rosenthal and his crew survived the continuing catastrophe was a miracle. The men were already at a disadvantage before the Monster Raid began, as was the case with many of the 100th's actions. The group was only allowed to launch 17 planes into the Monster Raid instead of the required 20 to 21 since they had already lost a few aircraft during the previous Brayman mission. Then, Four planes had mechanical problems that forced them to return early in the mission. Only Rosenthal's aircraft, Royal Flush, returned to base after reaching Munster, and he provided an account of what transpired with the other 11. Not all members of the 100th were as fortunate as others in being able to leave their planes. After completing his 25 missions, Rosenthal continued his journey. One of the 100th Bomb Group's most successful members was Robert Rosie Rosenthal. He carried on flying after making it through the Munster raid his third mission with the 100th. Rosenthal not only flew the required 25 flights, like Captain Glenn Dye, that permitted a soldier to return home, but he went above and above by completing 52 missions altogether. From 1941 until the conclusion of the war in 1945, Rosenthal was a member of the U.S. Army Air Forces. Nor was the Munster Raid his only noteworthy expedition. Rosenthal was shot down while piloting an aircraft over German-occupied France in September 1944. With the assistance of the Free French, Rosenthal was able to resume his duties despite breaking both his nose and his arm. Afterward, on his second-to-last mission in February 1945, Rosenthal's jet caught fire as he was bombing Berlin. He remained in the jet until they reached their bombing location, and he managed to flee just seconds before it exploded. Rosenthal was saved by the Allies once more and went back to work right away. Following World War II, Rosie Rosenthal's actions. After the war, Rosenthal's duty also continued. Even after the war ended in 1945, Rosenthal stayed in Europe to support the Nuremberg trials. He questioned Hermann Göring when he was there. At the trials, he also got to know his wife, a lawyer who was a member of the U.S. Navy Women's Reserve. Together, the two had three children when they came back to the U.S. Masters of the Air portrays Robert Rosie Rosenthal's story as one of the most remarkable in the grim history of the 100th. We talked about Masters of the Air and I appreciate you spending out with me. Please remember to subscribe for more film analyzes and to give the video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Let's continue in the comments section. Thank you all.